Top Rank says they wanted Terrence Crawford, their fighter, to fight Danny Garcia in a pay-per-view before going towards Luis Colazzo. Stay tuned. Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations the Venmo donations and the Patreon family, we working. Now, I gotta do this quick disclaimer. You know, this is a good video, good topic. And I seen it earlier, but I've been packing and went to get my hair cut. And I'm just now getting around to making a video. I haven't watched anyone's video regarding this topic, but bro, just buckle up, because my views might be a lot different than probably what other people are thinking because i was on a live stream earlier and i seen a lot of comments and some people were saying danny garcia is ducking crawford and you know so these are my thoughts regarding the situation now to give you guys the backstory shout out to the ring mike coppinger wrote an article he spoke with top rank and you guys see the caption the headliner says top rank wanted to make terence crawford versus danny garcia a pay-per-view fight in march of 2019 says Crawford is headed towards a matchup with Luis Colazzo March 23rd at Madison Square Garden. It's another routine title defense for Bud, an elite fighter who's yet to share the ring with another such talent. Colazzo wasn't top rank's first choice before top rank president Todd DeBuff began negotiating a deal with Colazzo, his manager Keith Connolly. The promotional company made overtures to a different fighter advised by Al Heyman. Both Todd DeBuff and top rank vice president Carl Moretti recounted to the ring on Tuesday the details of an offer delivered to Angel Garcia for his son, Danny Garcia, to meet Terrence Crawford in a welterweight title fight on that same exact date. The offer presented by Moretti during a phone call with Angel Garcia, $3 million guaranteed plus an upside of the pay-per-view revenue. The plan was for Crawford Garcia to headline Top Rank's first pay-per-view show on ESPN. Of course, Garcia is aligned with PBC, meaning he fights exclusively on Showtime slash Fox. Moretti says, quote, it was a totally professional discussion. He said he would discuss it with Danny, and I never heard back. I appreciate him taking the call. I think the door is always open, open absolutely. Moretti says he spoke with Angel two and a half weeks before an April 20th bout with Adrian Granados on Fox was announced on November 13th. That means it's likely that Danny Garcia and Adrian Granados already had an agreement in place when Moretti and Angel chatted. Danny didn't immediately respond to a message seeking comment from the ring. So they try to get Danny's spin on this as well. And he hasn't responded to, to them as of right now. Crawford and Garcia are headed in different directions for now, but Top Rank maintains interest in making the matchup later in 2019. DeBuff and Moretti say collaborating with Showtime or Fox on show on a show isn't a hurdle. DeBuff says they're considering offering the fight to Keith Thurman. They were considering offer to Keith Thurman or Sean Porter, both of who outpointed Garcia, but there were obstacles. Thurman hasn't competed in almost two years due to injuries. To his elbow and his hand and he returns january 26 against josecito lopez porter has a mandatory defense lined up versus yugas on march 9th debuff says quote danny was sitting there and we felt you know what it's a really terrific fight we didn't want to value the loss garcia losing to porter that was an entertaining fight in a close fight garcia has market value as it relates to crawford DeBuff and Moretti say the offer was made directly to Angel Garcia rather than Al Heyman to ensure the fighter received information about the opportunity. Top rank chairman and Heyman haven't done business with each other in years. So they claim there was a fear that Al Heyman wouldn't present such an offer to his fighter. 
I don't know who to present to with these guys, DeBuff argued. They say they're the promoter, they're not the promoters. They say they're the agents, they're not the agents. If Angel Garcia told Moretti they wanted to discuss the fight further, DeBuff says, at that point, Top Rank would have reached out to Al Heyman to try to hammer out the deal. I just want to make sure these guys get the offer, he said. They know who represents these guys. This is coming from PBC. We're a management company. We've always been a management company. Tim Smith, vice president of PBC, told The Ring. Our phone numbers haven't changed. Right? And then you can go to the link in the description to read this, you know, write up. This is kind of talking about the beef that they previously had. Now, this is my thoughts on it. I got to do a couple um, precursors to what I'm about to say. As far as in the case of Terrence Crawford, he's a dog. He's a terrific fighter. I have no doubt in my mind that he's about that life. And I think he'll fight Danny Garcia, Errol Spence, or any of these guys. Fact. You know, I, I've never seen him duck a challenge. In fact, he's a competitor and a competitive person. So, you know, anybody within reason in his weight class, in or around his weight division, he's down for it. So, it's not really even anything against Terrence Crawford as a competitor. I do think Terrence Crawford is about that life and i think he's down to fight you know any of the pbc guys that's one thing however listening to this whole story you know from the top rank side of things at first it sounds cool you know and people would easily jump and say oh look my danny garcia you know he had an opportunity three million that's good money why did he de why did he deny it or why didn't he respond to it but we got to put this in perspective now hear me out just listen to these points. One, Danny Garcia, whether it was a close fight or not, he's coming off of a loss. That means in his last three fights, he lost two of them. You know, Keith Thurman in March of last year, and then he beat uh, Samuel Vargas. No, I, oh, he beat Brandon Rios, excuse me. So, yeah, Keith Thurman lost. Then he beat against uh, Brandon Rios in March, and then he lost again in a title fight with Sean Porter. So... In his last three fights, he has two. He's going to have to figure that out, first of all. You know, so a guy coming off of a loss, I mean, who wants to fight a Crawford coming off of a loss? That's one thing. You know, and this is, that's that's probably the more minimal parts of it. I'm just, I'm just saying be realistic. That's like, whether you're knocked out or just coming off of a loss, you're going to have to figure it out because boxing is a sport where if you take too many losses, it's not going to look good. We all know that, you know? Like Jose Benavidez, do you think he's going to fight Errol Spence next when he just lost to Terrence Crawford? Even if it went the full 12 rounds, do you think he would fight Errol Spence if, if he lost a decision? You know, you got to figure out, you have to kind of go back to the basics because you don't want to take too many losses in a short space of time. You're going to try to figure out what's what. That's a simple point. Let's keep going. The other things that make this sound, this offer sound fishy or like, you know, questionable things, if you will, is the the rate of money now you really want to make this fight this is going to require two parties coming together you know some type of cross promotion espn pay-per-view and you're offering him three million dollars which is not far from the type of money he's already seen you know i don't know if they get extra like spiffs or commissions for you know if the events do well i don't know you know we only know disclosed purses and whatnot but I know for a fact, Danny Garcia, when he was fighting the likes of Robert Guerrero, both him and Robert Guerrero got over a million. He made more than Guerrero, but they both, I think it was like 1.25 for Guerrero and like 1.5 million for Danny Garcia. I did a video about it. When Danny Garcia fought Keith Thurman, he got $2 million, right? And then he probably got, you know, in between one to $2 million to fight Sean Porter just recently. So we're talking about Danny Garcia who is consistently somewhere right in that range one to two million dollars right on his own side of the fence which yes that is the thing you know in his own network you know he's he's making around that pay-per-view you know to crawford and danny garcia coming off a loss they're not proven commodities in in the pay-per-view arena you know terrence crawford his last pay-per-view, to my knowledge, from what I recall, with Victor Postal when HBO first announced their budget cuts, did about 50000 
So you got to look at it. Just, you know, everyone says boxing is a business. There's no guarantee that I, I think it's a great fight. You know, let's let's put it out there. They have a backstory. I think they're one and one from the amateurs. Right. But to me, I, I don't I don't think that's a substantial enough offer because you would have to kind of to get in a different tax bracket. You would have to hope that the, the pay-per-view success of this event, you know, nets you a lot more money. You know, because three million dollars, he got two million to fight Keith Thurman. You know, and I don't know about sponsors, endorsements, and you know any additional things like that. You know that he might have uh, been involved with. You know, he has his own barber shop. You know, he, he he's making money. He has his own barber shop and possibly record label. I don't know if he manages his sisters. They got videos on World Star. You know, he has merchandise, so he's making money. So, you know, the reason that matters is by the end of the year. You know, he's probably between getting two million from Keith Thurman, he's probably getting close to that already. So you would have to hope that Crawford versus Garcia, Garcia coming off of two losses in the last two years, would would sell on pay per view. So I, I don't think the three million is is anything. This is it, it kind of reminds me of Adrian Broner when Pacquiao was with Top Rank, right? I told you my thoughts are probably different than a lot of people when. Notice how when Top Rank had Manny Pacquiao and there was this rumor that Danny Garcia and Broner got offered three, four million dollars to fight Pacquiao and they didn't fight him. And then, you know, Pacquiao went on to fight Bradley three or whoever he ended up fighting at that particular time. Right. Meanwhile, Pacquiao, as soon as he leaves his first official fight with no Top Rank distribution, no Top Rank help or anything, who's he fighting since he linked up with Al Heyman? Oh yeah, that's right, Adrian Broner. Somehow, some way, they got it done. You got to start, you know, putting the, putting this together in your head. So to me, I don't think that three million dollars is really strong. You know, because you're gonna have to rely on it being a successful pay per view to make a lot more money than that. You know, so the three million guarantee that's that's not horrible, but. That's not really a far cry from what Danny Garcia is already making, you know, and then from the business thing, you're coming off a loss. Does that really make sense, you know, to fight Terrence Crawford coming off a loss for three million? And trust me, it gets better. I got more stuff to talk about. So buckle up. But, you know, fight Terrence Crawford for three million and hope the pay-per-view does well. Got to keep in mind that there's already a couple of pay-per-views. Wilder Fury coming up. Broner Pacquiao coming up. You know, Errol Spence versus Mikey Garcia is in March. That's coming up. They said they're trying to make this on uh, March 23rd. So, you know, hypothetically, let's say Danny Garcia said, fuck it, I'll take it. You would have to get on March 16th. You would have to, if you wanted to, buy Errol Spence versus Mikey Garcia on March 16th. And then the very next weekend or close to it, you would have to pay for another ESPN pay-per-view for Terrence Crawford versus Danny Garcia. You know, on top of the Broner Pacquiao and Wilder Fury in the previous month. So December, January um, and March, you would have two pay-per-views, you know. So that's where it starts getting strapping. The other thing is you got to look at that. I told you guys this from the beginning. This is a business. It's nobody's job to help the competitor, so to speak. So top rank they're you know their fighters undefeated so they're gonna use they're gonna be at the helm of this vehicle so they're gonna get it's gonna say top rank everywhere and it'll just be an al Heyman, just like when danny jacobs fought golovkin or when amir khan an al Heyman advice fighter went to fight canelo that was a golden boy card it was like golden boy arranged the luncheon golden boy you know they set up the round table they picked the ring card it was like a golden boy event just happen to have Amir Khan, who at the time was advised by Al Heyman. You get what I'm saying? So that would be the same thing. Do you want to have an event like this and give your opponent or your competition the credit? And, you know, it's happening on their terms. You got to start analyzing this. So a lot of people are saying, oh, Danny Garcia is ducking. Let's let's keep going. The other thing is this, and we'll get to some of the more important things that I that I've thought about regarding this particular fight. You know, aside from the money doesn't sound like too crazy. And that's just, I'm just being real. Like I said, if you're making 2 million at least to fight Keith Thurman and you're getting one something and then to fight Crawford on pay-per-view, 
then you're only getting three million you know this is similar to what they offered him for pacquiao so maybe they gotta up the money especially since espn is supposed to have a huge budget that would be probably one of the biggest fights on espn you know it'd be bigger than lomachenko pedraza or jesse hart versus ramirez too and then all you can come up with is three million dollars so to me the more i start thinking about this the more it seems like some of the feedback for the Colazo fight hasn't been the greatest and for the record i don't think that's a terrible fight like it's not it's not the biggest fight and it's not a fight that i think will catapult crawford to superstardom per se it's not a star it's not a um sure shot star making type of fight but i think it could be a good fight colazzo is no slouch you don't just come to lay down i think it could be a good um ta challenging fight you know where he has to he's made to work and he has to figure some things out you know colazzo doesn't just like i said give up and lay down so you know the more i start thinking about this the more i'm starting thinking of like the legitimacy is this they really want to make a fight with danny garcia or the Colazo fight with Crawford is getting poor feedback, so they want it to be public that they reached out to try to make a Danny Garcia fight. Now, let's get to some of the, the beefier points. One, they told you they reached out to Danny Garcia two and a half weeks before they did the Fox on PBC press conference. Now, if you know anything about business, most likely Danny Garcia versus Adrian Granados was done because I highly doubt that they put together that press conference with Fox and Fox cameras, had all these fighters from different areas. Danny Garcia trains in Philly, you know, Keith Thurman in um, wherever, Florida, Errol Spence and the Charlos there in Texas and different spot, you know, and you have everyone congregate, you know, John Molina's in SoCal, you know, you just, to orchestrate something like that, it usually takes long. So most likely, you know, if I had to take a very educated guess, I would say Danny Garcia was already booked for Adrian Granados because they were putting together their schedule. Fighters have to sign contracts. Fighters have to agree to the purse. They have to agree to the location. They have to know who they're fighting. You know, they have to have some details. So if Top Rank only reached out two and a half weeks prior to that announcement, more than likely, the fights were already made you know they you think they just waited till a day before and got everyone to fly out from these different places to be in la fox studio for pbc on fox so that's another reason why i don't really think this particular situation is a duck let's keep going now in addition to to that you got to read this article and scrutinize certain things right they said hey this is a good fight DeBuff and Carl Moretti say the offer was made directly to Angel Garcia rather than Al Heyman to ensure the fighter received the information about the opportunity. Very questionable decision from top rank. If you truly want to make a fight, like I read the comments and this is not my thoughts. I'm just talking about what fans say in the comments section. Y'all say Angel Garcia is, uh, you know, Scarface and on drugs. Y'all say he's a lunatic. Y'all say he's a racist. Y'all say he has a big mouth, you know, just different things that you guys say in the comment section about Angel Garcia. I speak the truth. Oh, you American when you get that, you get that fucking welfare check, huh? You know, he's, you, hey, ponytail, ponytail, pon you know, he's doing the hooting and hollering. And Top Rank is trying to create a pay-per-view worthy fight. And their first line of contact is the trainer slash father who you guys say is erratic and irrational and those kind of things. To me, that sounds really sketch that you would go through him and then later, later say you're doing it because we fear that Al Heyman wouldn't present such an offer, right? But then say if Angel Garcia told Carl Moretti that they wanted to discuss the fight further, at that point, Top Rank would have reached out to Al Heyman to try to hammer out a deal. So that's like some New Jack City G Money type of like backdoor deal, side deal type of shit. That's weird that you would go through Angel Garcia of all people, you know, and try to hammer out a deal. And if he liked the, the little side deal you try to make, then go through his advisor. That, that doesn't make sense to me. So I think to me, looking at it this 
kind of seems like a PR move. Because why would you go through the trainer? You get what I'm saying? That's like, let's say I have a fighter and I want, uh, let's say I manage Gervonta Tank Davis. Or I'm a promoter, right? And I'm Mayweather Promotions. We'll just put it in perspective, right? I'm Leonard Ellaby with Mayweather Promotions. I want my fighter, Gervonta Tank Davis, to fight Ryan Garcia, right? Good fight, big fight, etc. I contact Eddie Reynoso and offer him the amount of money I'm willing to pay him. On some side deal, New Jack City, Nino Brown, G Money shit, and make this side deal. And if Eddie Reynoso, the trainer, the new trainer of Ryan Garcia, or Ryan Garcia's dad, who was training him, if they like the deal, then we'll go up the chain of command and go to Golden Boy, you know, go to his advisor. Doesn't really make sense to me. That makes actually very little sense. You know, if you have to go through Al Heyman at some point to finalize this, then why don't you just go through him from the beginning? You get what I'm saying? Or contact Al Heyman and then reach out to, to Angel Garcia and say, hey, I sent some paperwork through to Al and we wanted to get to you. So make sure you follow up with him. That doesn't, you know, it makes absolutely no sense. If you have to go through, the bottom line is if you have to get approval from Al at some point and work out the deal and hammer out the deal with him at some point, then why don't you just start with him since he's the advisor? makes no sense you know that's like that's like me asking my mom if i when i'm a kid asking her if i can spend the night at my friend's house but it has to get approved by both of my parents for me to spend the night so she says yes my mom says yes you can spend the night at your friend's house but my pop says no and i can't spend the night at my that doesn't make sense i might as well just ask them together you know instead of trying to create this side deal so that to me that really stood out here says if angel garcia told moretti they wanted to, to discuss the fight further at that point top rank would have reached out to Heyman and and tried so you're going to contact the advisor after the trainer likes the the basic parameters of the deal you know doesn't look good now finally save the best for last another reason why this kind of seems like um a clap back to negative feedback from terence crawford and Luis Colazo, which is likely the next fight, which again, I don't even think it's a terrible fight. I just don't think it's what a lot of fans want or expected, but stylistically, I don't think it's a bad fight. Colazo, um, he challenged Keith Thurman, but the feedback I've seen has been very negative for the fight. I'm just telling you my opinion, but here's the, here's the kicker. I was at Crawford's last fight at the Chai Health Center when he knocked out Jose Benavidez and Bob Arum, specifically him, so the the creator and founder of Top Rank, specifically said that Errol Spence is the only guy on Terrence Crawford's level, Sean Porter and Danny Garcia. I discount and discard those guys because they're not on the level of Terrence Crawford. I have no interest in in making Terrence Crawford versus Danny Garcia or Sean Porter, who was a WBC champion, and this was after Danny Garcia and Sean Porter fought, right? Bob Arum of Top Rank specifically said that. So this is after Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, where Sean Porter was a WBC champion and Danny Garcia lost a close fight. Bob Arum told the public that, hey, guess what? You know, I'm not looking at them dudes. The guy we want is Earl Spence. He's the only one that's might be on Terrence Crawford's level. Them other dudes is like basically bums or not good enough, not worthy enough to fight Terrence Crawford. So fast forward to the future. If Bob Arum, the founder of Top Rank, is saying I have no interest in, in one of the guys you are now saying is ducking, you know, Bob Aaron said he was discounting him and he was discarding him. He's not looking to make that fight. So why is his stepson, you know, Todd DeBuff and, you know, Vice President Carl Moretti, why do they want to make the fight? So they're trying to make the fight, but Bob Aram already the head of this whole thing, you know, the guy who's in the business for top rank with the top rank business before them, he's telling you that he discounts Sean Porter 
and Danny Garcia. They weren't worthy. And I could understand if he said that years ago, but he literally said it at the Jose Benavidez, Terrence Crawford fight. So we're talking about a, a small window. We're talking about a small window where Bob Arum just recently said he's not checking for Danny Garcia, or Sean Porter for Terrence Crawford because they're nowhere near the level. So that's my thoughts on it. And I, I maintain exactly what I said. Bob Arum saying all this. Oh, Bob Arum is saying that uh, Al Heyman don't exist and nobody knows him and it's a bad look that no one can get a hold of him. And I told you, I didn't like when Bob Arum initially said that, you know, how are you going to say that Danny Garcia and Sean Porter, WBC champion currently, is not on Terrence Crawford's level and they're better fights, but then now you're trying to make Luis Colazzo. So again, you have to understand where I'm coming from of how this sounds very very sketch you said sean porter and danny garcia aren't on terence crawford's level and they don't deserve a fight you're only looking for errol spence the only one of those pbc guys that is worthy but now your team allegedly really wants to make crawford versus danny garcia coming off of a loss offering him three million dollars in a pay-per-view upside for two guys who aren't proven pay-per-view commodities right and bob aram said pretty much the contrary he said he's not checking for sean porter and then now on top of that it's already been revealed that a lot of people believe you're fighting luis Colazo next so to me this is more kickback for um the bad feedback that the luis Colazo crawford fight is getting they're like covering their tracks and saying hey no but we reached out to angel garcia you know, to make it look like Danny Garcia is ducking. Again, I would love to see, you know, it's, it's sad that we have all these politics in boxing, but I'm just telling you what I see. I would love to see Terrence Crawford and Danny Garcia, you know, the third one from the amateurs to the pros, see what they learn, you know, but just all things considered, I don't consider this a duck because something about this does not add up. You know, how Bob Arum could just recently say at the Shy Health Center after Crawford versus, um, Jose Benavidez outcome he said he's not looking to to make Sean Porter versus Terrence Crawford but then now your minions your your people under you vice president and president they were really trying to make this fight with the guy you said is not worth it and you know and then on top of that so you weren't looking for anyone other than Spence you were you were looking past a champion in Sean Porter and a former champion in Danny Garcia but you can't make those fights because they're, they're not worth Crawford. They're not on his level. But then you can make Luis Colazzo, who both Sean Porter and Danny Garcia, you know, in a, inexplicably, inexplicitly and unequivocally have done more recently than Luis Colazzo, especially like, you know, wins and stuff. You know, Danny Garcia has a really good resume. Knocked out Brandon Rios, dropped Lucas Matisse when Lu Lucas Matisse was tearing through guys at 140, stopped Amir Khan. You know, I don't have to go through this. Sean Porter, his losses are all respectable. Kell Brook, respectable. Keith Thurman, some people were booing Keith Thurman, thought Sean Porter win. He won the fight and, you know, he fought against Danny Garcia and beat him. You know, he, he has a, he beat Broner, who's fighting Pacquiao now. He has a respectable win, you know, and his losses are respectable. So you, you completely sold them out and said they weren't worthy of Crawford, but now you're, you're, vice president and stepson are saying that they were really trying to make this fight you know with a three million kickstart just sound it doesn't sound right you guys try to make sense of it in the in the comment section but to me i'm not considering this a duck because it doesn't make sense plus like i said danny garcia is coming off a loss he's gonna have to get that in order i think the adrian granados on fox you know free he's gonna get probably not gonna get three million guaranteed but he'll probably get one one and change guaranteed, one million, and an uh, opponent who's tough on regular TV, and hopefully he can secure a win in the win column. You know the Garcias need that, to, and then he already has a lot of people. He could fight Pacquiao, Broner. Like if he just look at it, there has to be a game plan for this shit. Broner and Pacquiao. You don't think Danny Garcia is a potential person in line for the winner of that fight? Danny Garcia and Broner already said that they would um, be willing to fight each other despite being friends if pacquiao beats broner which i think he's the favorite danny garcia and pacquiao have been linked 
you know errol spence mikey garcia what if mikey garcia wins mikey versus danny you know so why go to espn pay-per-view to fight a difficult fight for sure you know for not much more than you're making no guarantee that you're gonna get pay-per-view bob arum already like tried to roast you and said you weren't worth it you know and then you want me to feel that this is a duck because Angel Garcia didn't call and when it was likely, when it's, it's really likely, highly likely that the Adrian Granados fight was already in play, you know, that's my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Ego Valley, we working. So the deal here, uh, you have Terrence Crawford as a star welterweight. All the other top guys are on the other side of the That's seat. not true. Me, Bob. That's no, not true. The, the fights that the fans want to see Well, are fight, elsewhere. fights that, that guys who, like you who write, I would bet any amount of money that Vesputen and Cavaliscus can beat these guys. You're misunderstanding, you're misunderstanding my point. You may be right about their ability. I'm talking about what the public and what the media... How do you know what the public wants I hear from them every single day. Come on, because, day. because you're the one who is spouting guys like Porter, guys okay. like Garcia. So tell me, they're not and, they have, and they have titles, though. They have belts. That's what he wants, who belts. Who gives a damn? You gave a damn when you made him die. A lot of people think Spence is better or just as good. Okay. That's Spence. Just Spence. Uh, the, all the other guys I discard, they're not in the same league. Spence may be in the same league. I would love to make the Spence. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.